Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we're gonna be looking at this very popular post that was done over on Instagram by a, can I believe he's Canadian, plant person, house plant person. And I thought, this is awesome. I love this post. So let's talk about whether or not he's right, he's wrong, what the heck's going on, but just in general, do you still fertilize in the winter or not? What happens? What happens with fertilizer in the winter? Does the plant actually go dormant? We're gonna get into all of that. So the post initially referred to the fact that he fertilizes in the winter only up until active growth ceases, or that's kind of what I got from the post. You have to let me know in the comments down below if you, you got a different vibe, such as he maybe fertilizes the entire year. Now, if you're still in active growth, of course it makes sense to fertilize only because you need to you know help that upper foliage but when the plant stops growing do you keep on piling on the fertilizer do you back off or do you just stop entirely and we're going to be looking at that today and of course using scientific journals because we all nerds up in here so we do have different forms of fertilizer we have organic versus inorganic then we have liquid we have granular, we have slow release, we have stakes, spikes, you name it. And I can get into the differences between all the different forms, how they work, why they work. It's actually a really good video idea, a few video ideas actually. Anyways, but for all intents and purposes, we're talking about fertilizer in general. I think typically in the houseplant community, liquid is probably the more popular form of fertilizer over and above granular or any sort of slow release format i don't think those spikes are very popular so just something to keep in mind but we're mostly referring to liquid meaning uh, fertilizer that is added on a semi-regular basis so monthly or bi-monthly whatever your fertilizing schedule may be i have a house plant planner out and in that i have a bunch actually on fertilizing i talk about how to tell if you are deficient if you've over fertilized and just general fertilizing schedules i also have a fertilizing schedule in the garden planner as well but i will put a blog post up about this i don't know if it's going to be out when this video hits but i will in the very new near future at gardeningincanada.net over there you can print that out and it's going to tell you what to look for when it comes to fertilizing so i think the best way to look at plant dormancy and what exactly the plant is doing during a dormant period is to look at probably the most extreme example of dormancy so insert Canadian winter and all the poor plants that are stuck outside when said Canadian winter is happening. So I know that this is not obviously a house plant, but we do have data, we have science that shows us in these extreme conditions what's happening. That means through this video, we can take that info and apply it to our house plants because physiology wise, the plants are very, very similar and their mechanisms in which they grow, again, very, very similar. So the topic of dormancy, both in house plants and in our outdoor plants that are covered in snow right now, is that there's there was no consensus on what exactly the plant was doing during winter. Up until imaging technology was introduced to the world of plant science and soil science, we assumed that they went dormant. Now there was scientists out there that said, no, these things are actively growing. We tried as scientists to dig up root biomass to see if we could see um, elongation in our nodules or our nodes, our apical meristems on our roots, you name it. We tried everything, but nothing was definitive in saying, yes, the roots are still active, despite the fact that the upper biomass is doing nothing. Until we got, professional imaging or technology that actually images the roots for the entire season, for the whole year actually. And there's some really interesting stuff that came from this. So some things that we discovered through this imaging technology is that roots don't grow at the same pace or even close to the same rate. 
they actually grow relatively uneven. So if we look at a plant, we notice that say we have a pothos or a hanging basket of some sort, we notice that different strands will grow at different paces. Some will have new growth, some won't have any, some will be going crazy, some will not. And the roots are actually doing the same thing. It is a very ununiform growth pattern. They kind of just take off and go dormant as they please. Another thing we discovered is that there is a huge explosion in root growth in very early summer before any real leaves are showing up on our plants or our trees we are having very active root growth and then they kind of slow down throughout the midsummer mostly because I, I would think because of the heat lack of water that sort of thing they're trying to support that upper biomass growth rather than the lower biomass growth. And then we have a sudden spurt just before fall. So that's what we're seeing right now, especially when we look at houseplant journals post and he's showing all these plants that are actively growing like crazy. And that is because this is the final run into winter. And that's exactly what these plants do is they bulk up like crazy in the fall. This is the final hurrah before winter sets in. But probably the most interesting, and you have to share this video if this blows your mind, because actually all of you that do share my videos, I thank you very, very much from the bottom of my heart. You help me more than the YouTube algorithm does. Just saying. And there's some of you that are incredible at sharing some of my posts. I just, I love you from the bottom of my heart. But if this blows your mind, you have to share it. Studies have shown that during the winter, the tree may appear to be dead However, it is in a resting phase with essential life processes continuing at a minimal rate. However, if the soil temps are able to stay above freezing in the root zone, we actually see a bulking phase in our root systems. I know, mind blown, my mind hurts. So that means during the winter months, we can see lack of foliage growth. So above ground, it looks stoic. It looks as though everyone's gone dormant, gone to sleep, especially with our houseplants. There's not a lot of new growth in the winter, especially if you don't have grow lights and you're just relying on ambient lighting. However, below ground, it is treading water like a duck. It's just going crazy. And there's a ton of growth happening below the soil. This is actually happening outdoors too. So I'm gonna do a whole separate video on this for the gardening group, but we're gonna talk about mulch, you know, what this means for snowpack, when it falls, when it doesn't, how to protect our plants, all that stuff, because this is cutting edge stuff and we need to know and we need to learn to make us better gardeners ultimately. But for house plants, this means your plants are still growing in the winter. It's just nothing you can see. So during this bulking phase, what exactly is the plant trying to do? Why is it just exponentially growing root? And this actually is because the plant is doing one of two things. It is trying to store or increase its water uptake then may be lost through the summertime due to rapid growth, intense heat, intense sun. The plant is trying to firm up what already exists. That's why if you don't water during the winter months, your plant's not going to die. But in the spring, in the summer, you may know, notice increased rates of root rot or sudden leaf loss. And this is because that plant, while the upper biomass wasn't doing much, was actually trying to bulk up both the roots with water and that upper biomass as much as possible. The second thing that's happening is actual nutrient uptake. And they did study this in trees outdoors. But what's happening is the plant is storing up on much needed nutrients that could have been depleted during the summer months, especially during those periods of exponential growth. This means it is filling up said battery to help fuel that explosive initial growth in early summer. This means if we aren't fertilizing throughout the entire winter with an adequate volume, we may have stunted growth, no growth, and or leaf loss in those early summer months. So if you do choose to fertilize your house plants during the winter time, which I obviously highly recommend because that is what your plant wants, you most likely will see a ton of growth in the summer and especially in that very initial phase because the catapult for growth in those early summer days isn't what's just suddenly dissolved nutrient wise on a whim in the soil at that time it is all the work that the plant did 
through the entire winter months helping catapult that plant forward. So just keep that in mind. You can fertilize in the summer months. You can start loading on the fertilizer in the summer months if you so choose, but you're not gonna see as good of results as if you were to fertilize throughout the entire winter. So when it comes to this, obviously full strength isn't you know the greatest idea and you shouldn't overwater. So you shouldn't push the fertilizer issue if your plant is not using said water. You don't want an anaerobic environment. You don't want root rot. However, when you do decide to water or when you can water, I personally would just do either depending on how often you're watering. But if you're noticing that the plant isn't using as much water, you're maybe watering once a month, once every two months, do a full strength fertilizer. Now keep in mind, if you do do the first full strength liquid fertilizer way of doing things, you wanna water that soil prior to. So what I want you to do is I want you to put that house plant into a container where it can uh, capillary flow up the water um, and let it sit there for an hour or two. Just let it really soak up all the water that is just plain water in a container. And it could be even just the cover pot of the plant. Then what I want you to do is I want you to take it out of that cover pot, put it in the sink, put it in the shower, and I want you to run water over top of it. So I want you to flush that system right out. Let it run for a minute, two minutes, whatever. We want to flush out any excess salt that is present. Remember, your plant is partially dormant above ground and you do have a closed system. So we need to reduce the volume of salts as much as possible. So once you've rinsed it, and just trust me on this, you can't overwater your plant if you follow the directions I'm telling you to. A pinky promise. I put my stamp of soil science on this. Next stage what you're going to do is you're going to take the pot say this is my pot and this is like my plant is sticking out the top you're going to take your pot and you're just going to turn it so that the corner is up and the other corner is down and let me tell you you're going to be blown away by the volume of water that pours out of that sucker you're going to be like holy shit she's right it's called field capacity i don't know what the heck you'd call it in a pot but it's called field capacity when it comes to the soil outdoors, but you're gonna change that field holding capacity and uh, tip it up. Once it stops draining water, you're going to mix up your fertilizer and full strength in just a regular jug of water. And then you're going to water your plant to the point that the fertilizer water runs out the bottom. Then you're gonna do the handy dandy tipty dipty. Again, you're gonna drain out the rest of the fertilizer. They may be just like chilling out in there and you're done. And you're just gonna put your pot back wherever you please, whether that be in a window, in the sunshine, I don't care. And you are done. You are officially fertilized and bulking for those winter months. You guys have to let me know in the comments down below if that's what the printout's gonna be. I'm just gonna do the instructions for how to fertilize in the winter for houseplants and avoid root rot all at the same time. That's what, that's what the printout is. Be sure to grab the printout. I will make it so that it actually fits inside the planner really nice. If you get like the paper book or the PDF, that's what I'll, I'll do for that. Anyways, I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. You guys have to let me know in the comments down below if you even knew this was a thing, um, if you normally fertilize during the winter or if you notice when you fertilize in the winter, you see greater benefits or maybe for some of you, you see negative effects. You have to let me know. I would love to know what you guys have to say. The science says it's a good idea. So, I don't know. You guys have to try it out. Let me know what you think. I do fertilize. I do like quarter strength, but I, I so I, <laughs> oh, I should do a whole video on this, but uh, you're gonna judge me. My uh, potting soil and my plants is really moist all the time. I very rarely let these plants get bone dry ever. And actually my one coworker laughs at me all the time because she's like, you were somehow able to stave off root rot like nobody's business. But it's um, honestly, when it comes to root rot and over watering, I feel like, oh, I could do a whole video on this. It's very, it's, it's misrepresented as to how it happens, what's going on with it. But I do keep my potting soil relatively moist in all my house plants and my outdoor plants for that matter too only because I know that microbes, microbial activity, beneficial microbes that I need to do their job of nutrient cycling only work in semi-moist soil. So 
And that's the reason why I keep my soil relatively moist at all times and therefore I'm watering on a much more regular basis than probably what a regular plant person does. And so therefore I do do like a quarter strength because I don't let it dry out a ton. But um, you guys are doing like a rewetting process, etc. It's just going to help uh, potentially starve off, you know, issues of root rot or uh, fertilizer burn because of how I perceive your average person who is a plant person would water. So that was really long, intense. Okay. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, share, like I said before, join the podcast, join the Instagram, join the Facebook group. Um, I don't know what else I have. I'm horrible at representing gardening in Canada. I'm here for the fun. <laughs> That's literally all I'm here for. Not only that, but I did get this iPad because my cat spilled water on my computer. <sighs> Anyways with the iPad, I got like new editing software and I actually love editing videos. Total sidebar here. I love editing videos. I think it's like the funnest thing ever, but, um, yeah, I have a new editing app. So I apologize for all the craziness you're going to see in the next little bit only because it takes me time to learn. So just in my defense, it takes time to learn this stuff. I'm not a computer nerd. I just like playing with stuff. Anyways, I will, I hope you guys stay warm. I hope the snow hasn't hit you yet like it has yet here in Saskatchewan, unfortunately. But I will talk to you guys next time. Have an awesome day. Stay planty. Say dirtier than dirt. Dirt, dirt. I need a saying, like a closing saying. You have the plant people at the beginning. We need like a closing saying. It needs to be like a soil closing saying. You guys have to let me know in the comments down below what that is. I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.